A warning ahead that the following video contains scenes that some viewers may find upsetting. Cinema has been going for over a century, and the art of moving pictures is, mostly, still going strong today. I've seen hundreds of movies in my 19 years of life, and today I should be counting down what I consider the top 10 best of all time. These movies will feature either superb visuals, an amazing soundtrack, groundbreaking aspects, outstanding performances, or a spellbinding script to behold. Number 10. The Elephant Man. David Lynch is one of the most influential and important filmmakers of the 20th century, and despite not making any feature films in years, he's made some of the greatest films of all time, and I consider The Elephant Man to be the best of his movies I've seen. Based on the true story of Joseph Merrick, the film details his achingly sad life, being abused and mocked by residents of London and exhibited in a freak show as The Elephant Man. While the film features great performances from Anthony Hopkins and Anne Bancroft, the actor who steals the show is John Hurt, who gives such a wholesome performance as Merrick that earned him a well-deserved Oscar nomination. David Lynch's sense of direction is spellbinding, bringing a very fitting dark approach to the story, while also getting you to care about the main characters. Whether or not you know the true story, this film makes you strongly sympathise with Merrick and care about his friendship with Dr. Frederick Trevs. The technical aspects are also amazing. The music brings a very dark and sinister edge to the film, while the sets and costumes are well designed and very fitting for the time period. But easily the most groundbreaking aspect of the film is the makeup effect. This is the film that launched the Oscar for Best Makeup and Hairstyling, and the talent and effort of the makeup artists really paid off, even if they were sadly ignored by the Academy. One of the most depressing, but also beautiful films ever made. Number 9. Jojo Rabbit. Probably the greatest dramedy ever made, blending humour and drama to a perfect level, while also being a sublime film all around. Jojo Rabbit is not a satire of the Holocaust. Jojo Rabbit is a kid's journey of tolerance and understanding, and an amazing commentary on how kids can be negatively influenced by propaganda. There are a lot of really funny moments, but they never distract from the more serious elements. The performances are all brilliant, with Roman Griffin Davis not only bringing hilarity to his line deliveries, but also representing what is ultimately Jojo Betzler's innocence. Scarlett Johansson also brings a lot to her role as Rosie, providing both sympathy and humour in her role, and under well-deserved Oscar nomination, as is also the case with her role in Marriage Story. The true mastermind of the film overall, though, is Taika Waititi, who wrote, directed, and starred in the film. As well as writing possibly the greatest script of any film released in the 2010s, Waititi also brings so much humour to his role as a buffoonish version of Hitler. I'm not even sure I could explain my full thoughts of the film here, and at some point I'll do a more in-depth review of this film as a whole, but for now I'll say, it's a hilarious, emotional masterpiece of filmmaking, and it's not even remotely pretentious. Number 8. A Clockwork Orange Stanley Kubrick was certainly a genius in filmmaking, giving us some of the most influential and well-made films of the 20th century. A Clockwork Orange is, in my opinion, his best film. A Clockwork Orange has been accused of celebrating violence and misogyny, and I am honestly baffled, as it does neither of these things. Although the film takes place in a dystopian Britain, fueled by gratuitous violence and objectification of women, and it is often nasty, I ultimately see it as a warning as to what could happen if we let violence and misogyny go unnoticed, and the bad influence that could spread to thousands, if not millions of people around the country. Malcolm McDowell steals the show as Alex Delarge, representing his creepy, psychopathic, and overall despicable personality, and ultimately creates such an evil character determined to create a dystopia that he has complete dominance over, including attacking his fellow droogs when they try to have a say. When Alex is caught and sent to prison, he undergoes a program to put him off violent tendencies, and the treatment works so well that Alex can't even defend himself. When released from prison, Alex finds that he has become vulnerable to the dystopia he created, and the film addresses topics that are still relevant today including the government wanting to take violence off the streets just so they can put it in their own hands, as well as how Dim and Georgie become police officers so that they can legally hurt people. Christ on a bike, is that still relevant? If you're over 18 and comfortable with graphic content in films, I'd strongly recommend A Clockwork Orange, a bleak and unsettling, but ultimately thought-provoking well-made masterpiece. Number 7. Kramer vs. Kramer. A deserving winner of the Best Picture Oscar, though sadly not talked about so much today. Featuring a compelling story, strong character writing and development, and amazing performances, Kramer vs. Kramer is a sublime film from start to finish, and addresses many themes and issues of the time. Dustin Hoffman's performance as Ted Kramer is fantastic, and he nails every emotion and line delivery, from his more sympathetic delivery, to his angry delivery, to his hilarious mimicking of his son. You remember to bring the chocolate chip ice cream along? Yes, I did remember to bring the chocolate chip ice cream home. On top of that, the character development is really strong. This film has some of the best character development I've ever seen. Ted, Billy and Joanna all develop as the film goes on, 
and Ted and Billy's relationship is really believable. The two initially resent each other, and due to Billy's attention previously being from his mother, they initially have little connection. The two begin to connect, however, with Ted finally seeing Joanna's unhappiness and his previous lack of connection with Billy, and Billy learning from his misbehaviour. The film progresses, and you start to understand both Ted and Joanna's reasons for declaring custody of Billy, and I won't spoil the outcome, but it's surprisingly touching, and concludes the character arcs with Ted and Joanna really well. How would I describe this film? Terrific. Number six. Oh, I'm sorry, did I break your concentration? Pulp Fiction. I know it's a cliche to have Pulp Fiction on the list, but it's just a strong film all around. I addressed the film's narrative structure in my video on non-linear narratives, and I stand by my thoughts on that. And the rest of the film is great too. Pulp Fiction tells a lot of stories, but they all connect together and represent the lives of different characters, such as assassins Vincent and Jules, boxer Butch Coolidge, actress Mia Wallace, and mob boss Marcellus Wallace. And interestingly, despite a lot of the characters being evil, I still find them to be really interesting characters. The film revived several careers, and rightfully so. John Travolta is just brilliant as Vincent, representing his hilariously casual response to dangerous situations, especially Marvin's death. Oh man, I shot Marvin in the face. What? Samuel L. Jackson is also great as Jules, and represents his character development in such spectacular fashion, ranging from his angry evil side, to his angry attitude regarding Vincent's ignorance of what he sees in an epiphany. And while Travolta and Jackson get a lot of recognition, Uma Thurman gets less recognition. And that's a shame, because she shines as Mia Wallace, playing a heroin-induced character very convincingly. Well, based on my assumptions on how heroin-induced people would act, while also displaying a superb delivery of shockingly realistic dialogue. And speaking of dialogue, Quentin Tarantino is a master of writing it. Here, Tarantino manages to write not just realistic, memorable and quotable dialogue, but also hilarious dialogue. While not often regarded as a comedy, Pulp Fiction is funnier than a lot of comedy films I've seen, and it doesn't even seem like it's trying to be. Much like the Inbetweeners, Pulp Fiction manages to have its dialogue be both realistic and hilarious at the same time, and it just flows so naturally. And although a lot of the film is talking, the film also knows when to slow down and let you take a breather, particularly with the dance scene, and strangely enough, Butch returning to his apartment, which manages to go for at least two minutes without a single word spoken. A masterfully crafted film that most certainly deserved all the screenplay awards it got. Number 5. Citizen Kane. Again, probably a cliche to have this movie on the list, but it's also a strong film all around. Citizen Kane is certainly groundbreaking in terms of its technical aspects, and shows off so many amazing shots that provide such a subtle establishment of what each scene is about. These fantastic shots often comply with a surprisingly well-written script, and they both tell us so much about Charles Foster Kane, his loss of innocence, and how, despite becoming famous and financially successful, he was never truly happy from the moment he left his childhood sled, providing a really deep message about how money can't buy you happiness. Certainly groundbreaking for its time, and still a phenomenal film today, Citizen Kane is defo one of the greatest films ever made. Number 4. Fight Club. A film that is simply never boring. Fight Club was a film that had me intrigued all the way through. I kind of regretted watching it late at night, because it was so hard to stop watching. And I've already broken the first two rules of f but hey ho. Edward Norton and Brad Pitt bring so much to their roles, with Norton representing the despondent personality of the narrator, and Pitt representing the reckless psychopathic personality of Tyler. This is the film Brad Pitt should have won an Oscar for, not Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. The film is often confusing, but everything comes together and makes sense by the end of it. And of course we have that mind-blowing twist, which I won't spoil, for the two people that haven't seen it. Truly an intriguing, subversive masterpiece made by a great director and a great cast. Number 3. Memento. I talked about the story structure of this film in my non-linear narrative video, but Memento is also a superb film as a whole. It presents you with a lot of questions surrounding its story, but not to an extent that it creates plot holes. It allows you to make your own presumptions about certain scenarios within the story, such as how long he's been searching for the killers of his wife. And it's more than intriguing enough to warrant its enormously complex story. Guy Pearce, Carrie Ann Moss and Joe Pantoliano bring a lot to their roles, and Lennon is such an interesting character in the ways he gets closer to his goal. The editing is amazing as well, providing such perfect and clear transitions between forwards and backwards storytelling, and such a brilliant transition from black and white to colour near the end. A confusing but thought-provoking masterpiece, Memento is a film I'd strongly recommend from one of the greatest directors of this century. Number 2. American Beauty I'd like to start by saying that while Kevin Spacey's performance is fantastic, and he conveys the line deliveries and emotions to perfection, this, of course, does not define what I think of him as a person. 
The reason I start with this though, is my belief that even though Spacey didn't give anyone space in real life, this shouldn't be a reason for people not to see this film. I don't condone sexual harassment in any way, but I feel to refrain from seeing this film because of Spacey would be to ignore the talent of hundreds of other people involved in making it. And you should definitely watch this film just to see the talent of all those other people, because they poured their heart and soul into one of the greatest films of all time. And with that said, American Beauty is an artistic gem of a film, and certainly a worthy winner of the Best Picture Oscar. Alan Ball's script is absolutely sensational, and Sam Mendes brings it to life in a fashion that is near perfection. The cast are all fantastic, and as well as Spacey, Annette Bening brings so much to her role as Carolyn, especially in our last scene on camera. Comrade L. Hall's cinematography is also outstanding, and as well as showing off many nice shots, also uses different tilts, pans and zooms appropriately, establishing so much within the scenes and about the characters. Many people have mentioned it, but the film's colour palette is also fantastic. Primarily its use of the colour red, and how it's essentially the colour of so many elements in the film, including petals and blood. There's just so many great elements to this film, and very few flaws, if any at all. It's just a visually stunning masterpiece made by a talented cast and crew. Before I get to number one, I thought I'd go through some honourable mentions. Rashomon. An intriguing story structure and superb production values that make for, quite possibly, the best foreign film I've ever seen. The Shawshank Redemption. The highest rated film on IMDb, and definitely one of the best ever made. Not to mention it has one of the greatest plot to its ever. Murray and Max. An underrated and heartbreaking gem of filmmaking, and quite possibly the best animated film ever made. Birdman. Still one of the most technically groundbreaking films I've ever seen and a definite recommendation for cinematographer wannabes. Tangerine. A simple but well-executed story, with sublime leading performances and a definite milestone for transgender actors. The Lighthouse. An intense but visually striking masterpiece, and perhaps the 2001 A Space Odyssey of the 21st century. Willem Dafoe should have won an Oscar for this role. And with those said, here's number one. And the number one film is a film of the 2010s. Yes. An obvious choice for the top spot, a film that sadly flopped at the box office. It starts with a C. That's me. Please welcome my favourite film of all time, Cloud Atlas. Ah. While most people will remember the Wachowskis for The Matrix, Cloud Atlas is, in this critic's opinion, nothing less than the finest film ever made. It's also easily one of the most ambitious pieces of filmmaking ever made. Almost everything about this film is phenomenal, from its story structure, to its performances, to its visual style. While I address this film's story structure in my non-linear narrative video, there's so much more for me to talk about, and like with Jojo Rabbit, I'll definitely do a more in-depth defense of this film in future. Cloud Atlas discusses the theme of reincarnation, and how if reincarnation is real, our action in one life can have either a positive or negative effect in another life, depending on how we resolve to improve the world or to fuck it up even more. We have an ensemble cast consisting of Tom Hanks, Halle Berry, Jim Broadbent, Hugo Weaving, and many others, who play multiple characters across the 5th century setting. Watching the evolution of their souls is really fascinating, Primarily seeing Tom Hanks go from a selfish man obsessed with money, to a selfless man who saves the human race, and Hugo Weaving go from a racist bastard to a literal demon. This film is also visually striking, with the sets and costumes strongly fitting with their respective time periods, the design of Neo Soul being absolutely gorgeous, and the makeup effects being surprisingly detailed. The music is also phenomenal, and while this film got a Golden Globe nomination for its score, the Oscars ignored it completely. While I will call Argo the best film in 2012 behind Cloud Atlas, it's kind of sad that such an ambitious film with such a mind-blowing scale and so much thought and effort put into it would be ignored. But I could not possibly fit all my thoughts into Cloud Atlas into this video here. And as I said earlier, I will definitely be making my own defense of this film and why it's so underrated. But for now I'll say, its enormous scale and ambition truly pay off and create what I consider the greatest movie of all time. And an educa- Fuck, fucking shit. And an amazing commentary on how kids can be negatively influenced by proper the fucker. Ted, Billy and Joanna all develop as the film goes on, and tell- Fucking fuck.